Every afternoon during the school year, my 12-year-old son sits at the kitchen table and he does his schoolwork. Every other afternoon, he stops abruptly, he breaks a pencil, rips some paper, flings it to the ground, and he shouts, why do I have to go to school? Ah! Everything I can learn, I can learn on YouTube. <laughs> I have four minutes and 30 seconds to explore with you what on the surface could seem like a parenting problem. During Kai, it's my 12-year-old son's free time in the summer after school when he's done with his homework, he reads, he writes, he watches videos, he screencasts, he records videos, he draws diagrams, he will Skype with his friends and he'll make video recordings. He'll shout to his friend that he needs to turn his amp down while having a FaceTime jam session and he'll occasionally yell to me that in playing games online, there's no pause button. At DML this year, we're called upon to promote equity in digital learning and engage in thinking of ways to address educational opportunity gaps in today's technological world. This. This. This is a place, right, to address what is a parenting issue and a learning issue. This is an educational opportunity gap. The inquiry learning happening outside of formal education, the quandary of bringing opportunities to formal education that mass communication allows for, this quandary is the foundation of digital media and learning, creating spaces. How do we bring the inquiry learning that young people are engaged with in making videos and creating online and learning in their own communities of interest during free time and after school to everyday learning practices? If the conversation needs to be shifted from access to tech to access to opportunities to create and engage using tech, Henry Jenkins et al., and if the single most important characteristic of the internet is the limitless capacity for worldwide community and the limitless exchange of ideas, and if the internet brings about a new way of learning that's not new or revolutionary, but is the norm for graduating high school seniors and college classes, if Davidson and Goldberg's call to examine potential new models of digital learning and to rethink our virtually enabled and enhanced learning institutions is still a compelling one, and if traditional learning institutes have the potential to become as flexible and robust as the best social networking sites, then in taking the conversation to the basis of digital media and learning, in convening as we do here, or in Boston in 2014, or in Chicago in 2013, or in San Francisco in 2012, the question is, if a picture is worth a thousand words, what's the value of video? What is the way that we are gonna bridge the gap for my 12-year-old, Kai, and for all students, for all students. This is a parenting issue, and it's, it's a fundamental access issue. I have two minutes, three? Like two and a half minutes left to tango with you here at the Digital Media and Learning Conference. It'll be a short dance. Um, so from the golden age of the VCR cart on a rainy day or with a substitute teacher to the current era of flipped classrooms and personalized learning, the value of video is undeniable. Video is also the language of youth culture. So what are the ways that a video inspires and ignites student-centered learning in the digital age? How can we support the efforts of video integration to be systematically leveraged to maximize its worth? How video inspires. Let's acknowledge the ground upon which we convene. Video can be a catalyst to understanding, making, sharing, doing. The 12-year-old doesn't care much about what his teachers think. He cares a whole lot about what his peers think. He makes videos explaining various cheats and games. He watches videos to learn how to do other cheats. He changes how he plays in response to the things that he's learned. So what can video do to inspire young people? Video inspires action, reaction, recreation. The 12-year-old boy makes, he learns, he does. Take that learning loop and bring it to the foundation of formal education. Allow students the spaces to create and make and remake and use video as the catalyst, the spark, the inspiration. 
how to create more opportunities that use video as a conduit, shameless plug, KQED Public Media in Northern California provides powerful tools for using and making video in the classroom. Programs like these are support for creating and making, and you can learn more about them um, at our session in the cafe on Saturday. Thank you.